Hi, I'm Salome, a media rep from Ghana, and I'm in town meeting TV, hosting a program entitled Metenui, which is from the Ewe language in Ghana, and it means I am able. This is a program that is tailored and powering our youth with disability. The hardest stage of growth by development experts is adolescence through one's useful stage. And with disability could make the stage more challenging. Therefore, there is the need for education, empowerment, and advocacy. It with this in this light that you have to join me as we sit down with great minds to help empower our youth, especially with disability, and talk everything disability. And I have I will be having with me Dr. Sefako Komebu Pomei, an international disability rights advocate and policy analyst. So get connected to us on Town Meeting TV and be a part of this. Thank you. Hello and welcome again to your favorite program on disability metenui meaning I am able. I'm Salome, your host, and I have with me again today a resource person, a voice speaking for disability on a global platform, uh, my sister, Professor Sefako. Thank you so much, Auntie Salome. I'm so glad to be with you yes, again. <laughs> yes, I enjoy our conversations because, in fact, you have enlightened me so much on um, the area of disability, and then uh, we know we're going to do a great job for many people that at least uh, should know, be educated, be empowered, and have hope and realize that they are able yeah. to do everything. I, I want you today, as we left off the last time, mm -hmm. we were talking about the forms of disability. You made us understand that uh, disability are in two forms. That's the visible yeah. and the invisible. So I want us to take it from there. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, once again, thank you for our listeners, those mm -hmm. who are listening to metenui, mm -hmm. which means in our Ewe language, I am able, yeah. which actually is the title of my book, which has a long title, I'm able, um, a disability word, um, how do you call it? Like seriously, I'm forgetting my the, the name of my title. <laughs> a woman's advice for disability change agents, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that uh, I'm able is actually from uh, the title of my book, uh, Metenui in the Ewe language. I would like to um, quickly maybe uh, last, recap. recap, last week we talked exactly. about disability being mm -hmm. part of the uh, humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, we define disability to be um, anything that prevents you of functioning, um, anything that uh, it's either a trauma, disease, condition, any condition that you are going through that you are not able to perform any duty. So in other words, those of us who are sitting in a wheelchair, uh, we are not able to lift things upstairs. That is something that uh, prevents us. If you are wearing glasses and you are not able to read that thing, you have a disability. If you have anything that is preventing you, that was what we said last week. And maybe I want to uh, share a little bit to, with that in the um, in our language, so uh, in the Ewe language, we, we define disability. We have ne amarenye wamitoa, efiye ba nane ike wom, ne laro, enu ike wawu, ike matenwa wu nane kew, aro nane liyo mati wawagew. Ike efiye ba ame sha ame liya, nane li mati wawagew. Ne abe miyame yole, ele crutches aro le huche ma, miyawa mi mati zozomu, 
aro mi mate nana ke woga nanya ba anya dufufu fwa nya alo aro anya anyi ke bebi na kona nana le jifo mi mate wogo afya ba anaba mi mate ngogba yiga la ngmamu ga kama fya ba mate nana ngbubu wogo nana make nanya gankwye na dona afi kwa ngwa ka anya wamitema anu gado li ka mi mate ngu wonao na akwe ba nana li nana make mate wala ba mi fungu last week ha mi e blob covid va Ena mi trauma, ena mi mi katami vovom vovom ala mi katami ama vasaregba. Tana nyo ba COVID timely yena te tungu yama vuka kwa vasarafia. Ah, wamie wovoema ala ba chita manu fufu nyanya nyama mi buriona la yevuba ma ba trauma. Oha elema u yikanya part of disability aro disability afu de kaima which actually yika plumi vagba for discussion yeba whether wamire. Anya wamika na anu pokpon plan kulo, aro anya wamika ala in, inward, aro invisible. Yika fi aba, na wamiyali hava, maro tonya, na kwe plan kwa aba miyama yo le akbo ji, aro mi kbo tom, aro mi le chem, aro mi le white king rashi, bie zozom, aro toku nou, akwe ba amama, mamu samu, kake, na mara fi aba epilepsi la inti de, Aro ala suku mamu sromu waba leni disability. Mye yon na nguma o miyo miya pa agba ama kwa hama liyo. Nko ma lewo shiyo. Ta agba angu yifu gami ala enye ba wamiyade hayika wukwa na akpla nku. Akpla hayika wukwa na akpla nku ode leke miyo gafi anya o haa. Nene ma. So today's topic is definitely about visible and invisible disabilities. Which to me, I want to just... Make some uh, 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 examples for people to connect to it very clearly. So something visible is something which is showing, right? And see, it's you can, obvious. It's obvious. Exactly. So those of us who are having uh, um, movement issues mm -hmm. or mobility issues, mobility as we say, issues, yeah. we have been already aware. We, when I enter the room, the first thing people see about me or around me is my scooter or my wheelchair. Okay. Somebody's, I mean, who is uh, blind mm -hmm. because of the white, white cane. cane. Mm -hmm. That is what everybody sees. When we talk about visible, it's like you can see around the person that a okay. person is a disabled. And invisible disabilities are those that are not seen. Unless the person tells you that I have this. Like I remember last week when we were talking, so I, we, I mentioned- We want examples. Yes, I mentioned that I have dyscalculia. No, okay. This calculia has to do with mass. Okay. And as you see me beautifully like this, when it is mass time, I will be shivering. Okay. I will have every trauma that you can think about as if I don't know anything. In fact, I did mass. That was the only subject that I had notebook for. Okay. In my life. Hmm. When I say notebook, like from school, you know how we are given uh, notes to take. Exactly. I take my notes here. But when it is time for mathematics, I have to write it down. And the interesting piece is nobody knows what I was going through. We don't have a name for most of our invisible disabilities in our uh, African. In, in, in our part of Africa, yeah. yes. Yeah. That is why, for me, uh, making this very clear for us to connect with them is very much important and for I, me. And I, and I really want you to take your time in doing this for us because mm -hmm. we should come to appreciate the fact that invisible disability, it's there. And we need to recognize them. If we recognize them, then we can help. We can do something about it. So yeah. please take your time. Yeah. Take us through invisible, the examples of invisible disabilities. Yes, yeah, so for every disability that we have, mm -hmm. whether visible or invisible, uh, according to the WHO, mm -hmm. we have three dimensions. I okay. want to really talk about those three dimensions very clearly before I dive to the samples or examples. Perfect. Why Perfect. is it important is every disability connects to these three dimensions. Great. One is the impairment as we talk about. Mm -hmm. That can have uh, effect on the person, maybe their body structure mm -hmm. or the function or mental functioning of the person, uh, including maybe loss of limb like mine i'm paralyzed on the lower part okay my legs do not function right mm -hmm. that part of it is there for us to be seen mm -hmm. uh, activity 
limitation. We all have activity, activity limitation in every disability, whether visible or invisible, such as maybe difficulty in seeing, difficulty in working, or problem solving in a classroom, which we will talk about in terms of learning disabilities, right? And then participation restrictions. Normal daily activities, such as working or engaging in social and recreational activities, obtaining health care and preventive services, and da, da, da. Those three things, the impairment, activity, limitation, and participation restrictions, are the three dimensions that every person with disability goes through. And what I'm telling you right now, you can think about it yourself and say, oh, then I'm going through one of them at least if not all the three, yeah. because there are some times that you are definitely going to have some part, uh, participation restrictions, like yeah. you are not able to participate in certain things. Yeah. It's maybe because of what the type of disability, which you might have not even known about. Exactly. So the visible disabilities are the ones that you can see, like polio affected people, uh, deaf people because they have cochlear implants in the ear. People yeah. see the ear that they know that, oh, this person is disabled. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about invisible disability, they are the type of disabilities are mostly neurodivergent or mostly uh, sensory, are mostly invisible, you cannot touch it, you cannot see it. And most of them at times are connected to genetics, connected to what, as I said, trauma. And these disabilities, because we don't have names for them in our cultures, uh, we are not able to have attention to them. Mm. For instance, uh, epilepsy is one of invisible disability. If somebody has epilepsy, you will not know until the person has seizures. Yeah. If somebody has ADHD, yeah. something like that, you will not know what exactly the person is going through, except you have that person uh, in contact with the person tells you that I have ADHD and maybe this is what goes through. If somebody has in the classroom all the, let me say, all the learning disabilities that we have, let's say the simplest that I can connect to. So with, what are some of the learning disabilities here? Let's say quickly. dyslexia. Okay. Dyslexia has to do with reading yeah. and people who are not able to read, right? Sadly. So when you have a child, which can happen a lot in our, uh, in our classrooms in, in, in Ghana or Africa, mm -hmm. you know how we, we term those children when they are not able to read mm -hmm. or concentrate. So they are timid, it's like they are, they are, they are, some people use very, very, very awful, awful descriptions for them because mm -hmm. they are not just like the other children. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we don't know that it is a type of disability. Great. Because we think that those children are just lazy, as you said. Mm -hmm. But the fact that that child is not able to read, yeah. um, that child needs assessment or uh, needs to be diagnosed to be put on uh, what, what we call reasonable accommodation. Okay. Now, when we are talking about invisible disabilities, most of them because we don't know them in our language, we don't have ways to what, deal with them. Yeah. So the classroom situation is the place that we meet the student and then they behave differently. Yeah. They behave differently based on what the type of invisible disability they have. Mm -hmm. Now, the question for you and I right now, how do you know if a child has a disability or not? Based on the fact that you and I talk about disability being part of humanity mm -hmm. and everybody has disability now some of the disability is depression yeah or stress wow i'm telling you wow yes anxiety those are invisible disabilities mm -hmm. it's actually start from stress okay anxiety mm. then we get to a depression mm. and then as i said trauma the reason why I'm talking more about trauma and being part of invisible disability is we carry a lot of trauma from childhood. Okay. Most, almost all of us. Whether you have a disability or not, there is one piece of trauma for you. Now, as I said stress, why did you say, wow? Yeah, because we get stressed 
most of the time, when you are overwhelmed with situations, you realize that you are stressed up. Sometimes you're so tired, you're broken down. You, you, you can't function well. Exactly. Mm. You can't function well mm. brings you to that forefront that you have something called disability, that you name it, that you have invisible disability. Wow. When you know that you can't function like other people, because for instance, I carry trauma from my childhood. Hmm. The type of trauma I carry is when I saw my dad leaving the scene, wow. which is in my book, I'm Able. I am able, yeah. Because that is just part of me. It, 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 uh, it's a flashback every time that I see a person with disability from my childhood. I see how, or when I hear that your parents are divorced because of your disability. Wow. It's a flashback when I hear that I'm a single mom mm -hmm. because of my child's disability, the father left, which happens in everybody's life. And there are so many trauma that our children carry, mm -hmm. especially into the classroom. Why? Because nobody even identifies that as part of disability. Mm -hmm. Trauma, for instance, um, in our community, yeah. our Ghanaian community, mm -hmm. A lot of things happen to us and we suppress it down. Exactly. We, we they don't... ask you not to talk about it. Exactly. And there was a boy, just to not to cut you, um, the father uh, had suicide mm -hmm. and he was just a young boy. Mm -hmm. And everybody wanted to point out and say, hey, don't talk about it. Hey, don't talk about it. And, and you realize that it has the toll on him. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that we have those invisible disabilities, but we don't have names for them, is huge. Mm. And it causes a lot of havoc exactly. to the people or the children or the youth with disabilities that we are dealing with. Mm. I will just connect with those simple ones that we know from our land, mm -hmm. that we can bring them to the discussion. For instance, when you have what we call sickle cell anemia. Okay. It's a disability. Really? Yes, it is. Not the not 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 the condition, but it's a it's a. So what do you mean by condition? We learned that disability is a condition of what? Oh. Genetics. Okay. So yeah, genetics. Okay. Disease. Okay. So when you define that migraine, mm -hmm. which is something that we go through several times, so many things because migraine generates into so many things. Now. When I mention some of them, you will tell me whether it is visible, whether it is disability uh, visible or invisible okay. right now. So how did we arrive at the place that we call people with albinism in our country yeah. that they are part of disability? Wow. Yes, because when you analytically study them, mm -hmm. at some point they have blur vision yeah. or low vision. Yeah. And then if they don't have access to uh, uh, glasses or spectacle, they can't or, see. Pr or let's say uh, me uh, measures to let them see, mm -hmm. or sunscreen, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually uh, part of uh, uh, the struggle or the stigma that they have also to, they have uh, skin cancer. Yeah. There are so many things. That's for us, it, we don't talk about it in this culture because nobody will qualify a person with albinism to be having a, disa a disability because okay. of the stigma of being uh, uh, ab um, a person yeah. with, uh, with disability. Mm -hmm. But the fact that in Europe, in America, in Africa, they all have something limiting their function. Okay. They are all not able to see well. Yeah. They are all not able to function well. So when you say condition, any condition that can limit your scope okay. of performing the three dimensions, activity, activity mm. participation, mm. activity, mm. or mm. it has actually happened to your body that- An impairment. You, impairment. Mm. Okay. So when you look at disability critically for those three dimensions and you look at the, the types or the forms, you can see that both go through the same lane of stigma whether visible or invisible. Now, let me t say this in our language, because when I talked about stress, anxiety, uh, depression, mm -hmm. you are like, woo, right? Mm -hmm. We have gone through a lot of stress in so many things, mm -hmm. at home, at work, in the community. Mm -hmm. 
the good thing is we have found so many solutions for those in Africa. Mm -hmm. Maybe by meeting at a place, singing, clapping yeah. our hands, we find a way the to... way our culture, uh, our culture yes. is, we, we, we meet along But the thing that we miss is mm. we are not able to name it. Oh, okay. We are not able to identify it as part of disability. Okay. We are, because we don't want to belong to that small group. But here is the case, that group is actually not a small group. Is the oh. biggest minority or the largest minority group. Mm. Why am I saying this? Because when you take the word disability, mm -hmm. as we have started, when you put it in the middle, disability becomes that pivot that everybody revolves around. Yeah. When I say be, be, becomes the pivot, the black, the white, the rich, the, the poor, poor, the, I mean, Every difference that you can imagine. Yes, mm. the religious, the spiritual, mm. the what, what, every, this is the place that everybody meets. Mm. That's why in the definition, we pick it from the UN convention, we pick That's it from, uh, we are every country to see what are they talking about. All of them are saying that whether you have a visible disability or invisible one, they are all coming to that for a uh, place of stigma. And the visible ones are those that we see, and the invisible ones are those that we don't see. Now, they are countable because whatever you define in your culture or in your country, and you are able to capture that, this is what our policy says, that is what they work with. Mm -hmm. So in Ghana, for instance, we define disability generally like that, and then it's part of what? The invisible becomes part of sensory. Okay. Yes, so anything doing with, uh, you, uh, uh, with uh, the sensory part of the person, has to fall under the invisible disability. Mm. And the interesting piece here is uh, we have to know that it is something that everybody has. Okay. The doctor who is treating you or who says you have to be treated also is, has a form of, of invisible, invisible disability. disability. Mm. Uh, I'm a Ibolo, Yevulo, a Gatolo, I do Kono, I do a Womianya groupie, Kamikata, in your feet, Kamikata, my dogul. Nelpo, me to, I do in your Gato, I do in your Macau, Okata, Womunia, Gaka, Bovoto, Eker, Mala Womimunia, Maraca, Manyo, Novio, a Valia, Womia, Ali, Nakwe Plunku, visible. A dolly, I'm a tip bugger plunku, invisible. The view of the Yapa Suku Homer, me on about Lenny disability, ya. Oh, what's the suo kata, lemu or the shadama, mer sopler, a leka or jabber, nebubo and noa. The view mawa, oh, how on your me togaka, unsa bubula was she, unsa bubula was she, now mamma take langwa, maybe I ten draw, a rate jiha, I ten fuvu. Mokata, I give me a quillemia, then you babble, and he under the fear. Many a no more queen, a new new arrow, so strong. It our mea, me cata, jew or miller. Me cata me, you want me, want me. Doc take a doom, a treatment namu, la conji, a warm yada we go do, a la baby bob blobber, Nanya bala fear, la covid per gamma qua. Wa mi da kai kamikata mi kora tai me nye mi yona la yevuba me trauma. Ado pofo nya 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 jore mi eji vovon le mi ala la manami vasaregba. Mi kata mi doom chonchi. Ita womia ala masha ma inchi lo. Manya maroku ikwebe eve afilashi mo. Wow. Thank you. Uh, in fact, we are on town meeting TV and it's a place for spearheading diversity, equity, and inclusion. So if you hear us speaking a uh, local dialect, you should understand that we are including everything that will be of help to the people also back home and then for us all in the diaspora as well. Uh, I want you to look into the camera and look up because our concentration are on the youth, young ones. And like we said previously, on the ladder of development, you realize that the point of adolescence into youth, it's a very difficult time where your definition as a person, 
comes up with your psychological and mental health, which will rather push you into your next stage of adulthood, of which, of course, you become so much of an asset uh, to your nation, your family, and then your loved ones. So in the area of invisible disability, where you have made us understand, uh, what will you say to our youth, any young person? Because I'm asking this for them, because the younger ones as a baby is covered or supported by the parent or the guardian. When someone is a baby and coming up, you realize that the mother is able to carry her, uh, hug him or her, and do every kind of thing for the person and give them that emotional support. But you see that an adolescent will now be breaking up into adulthood and independence is very important. Mm -hmm. And his psychological makeup is also very important. Therefore, what will you say to that aspect of development of the youth? What do you urge on them to do when it comes to their challenges? Thank you so much for that. You said I should look at the camera. <laughs> look at the camera. Yes, and speak so, to them. Um, I have a topic that I teach across, uh, which is very important to the youth. Mm. Um, the youth of today needs to embrace disability as part of their part of identity. Mm. So uh, that topic is what we call disability pride, okay. which I think I can elaborate in our next uh, week yeah. or next ex episode yeah. because um, one thing that we know that the, the youth are losing today is that part of them of identity that who they are, especially when they are going through, as you said, adolescent mm. and invisible disability. Mm -hmm. So my word of hope to the youth is you are not useless at all. Mm. You are not... Uh, unproductive at all. Mm. You are not the negative thing that people think you are. Mm. Because in every angle that I find myself, every journey that I find myself, I have traveled across the world. And every place that I get to, it is that negative uh, vibe that you get around disability. But I want you to love yourself, embrace that you are a, a, a child. I would say what my mom gave me is I'm a child of God. That was the, uh, the, the gift my mom gave me because the society uh, always says that I'm negative. In fact, they wanted to throw me into the uh, what, evil forest, that I became evil child. And I was the negative, everything bad which will happen, it was from me because I became all of a sudden a person with disability, with my polio. So when I went through all those trauma, knowing very well that I'm the same Safako, Nothing is wrong with me. But here lies the case. Some people really think that I brought curse. I brought evil. I brought unproductivity to them. And then my mom will call me in, in, in our bedroom and tell me that, hey, you are a child of God. God loves you. You are the person that can be the person that God makes you to be. And you have to embrace you what can you, be who God, God wants, wants me to, to be. be. Okay. And I need to embrace okay. that myself to love myself because God loves me. I carry that along with me, that nobody can trash over me again because somebody somewhere loves me. At least I heard that because my own father said I'm useless. So that is a trauma I said I'm carrying from my childhood. Mm. So any youth who is not appreciated or who is not loved, and I would say that everybody with disability goes through any one pain or the other. Some That's from emotional it, it, trauma, trauma. Mm. from the teachers in the classroom, from the community, oh, some of us from our parents, from our homes, and you can name them. But one gift that I want to tell you is you are precious. Mm. You are very, very fruitful mm. and you are productive and you are going to be the person that God wants you to be. Mm. That is my lens. I understand it from the, the angle that God loves me. Mm. And that is what I carry till today. Mm. So one thing that I want to tell you is you are not useless as people think you are. And you are going to be the person that you want to be. Mm. So thank you so much for listening. And we will dive deep to see how you can build your disability pride mm. and be proud of yourself and just move forward mm. and make sure that 
you are the person that you are. Thank you so much for next Wow. Week. Thank you, Professor Sefako, for joining us on Metenui, uh, which means that I am able. It's a platform on town meeting TV that we want to give everybody, in fact, those with disability and those without disability, having been educated on what disability is, the forms of disability, and then the pride that comes in accepting and embracing who you are for our youth, for us to move on. Remember, the future lies in your hands as a youth, and you need to embrace who you are because you are able to do everything that you can do. Thank you very much. I'm Salome, and see you another time.